The ketogenic diet, a hot topic that's been buzzing around the fitness community forever. Whether you're a veteran gym goer or just someone who's heard the word keto in passing, this diet is all about cutting back on carbs and loading up on fats and protein. It's often hailed as a miracle diet for fat loss, but is it secretly sabotaging your muscle gains? But let's take a step back for a second. What is the keto diet? The ketogenic diet, or keto for short, is based on drastically reducing your carb intake, often to less than 50 grams per day. The idea here is to force your body into a state of ketosis where it primarily burns fat for energy instead of carbohydrates. This diet has gained a reputation as a go-to diet for weight loss, although its superiority to a plain old calorie deficit is questionable, as carbohydrates are not actually your enemy when it comes to fat loss. Keto proponents often argue that carbs lead to obesity, a claim that mainly comes from the carbohydrate insulin model, which essentially suggests that insulin is the primary cause of weight gain. However, this theory has been debunked by numerous studies and remains a controversial topic of debate in the scientific community. Keto is often promoted as a superior diet for fat loss, but the research that exists comparing keto to more traditional carb-rich diets shows no significant difference in long-term outcomes. Now, there is data showing that you may lose weight a bit faster if you follow a keto diet, but in the long term, there doesn't seem to be any major difference between keto diets and a plain old calorie deficit. This isn't to say keto is bad for fat loss. It's totally fine. It's just not the magic bullet people make it out to be. So the question that remains is, can you build a ton of muscle on keto? And can you follow a low carb diet in general, even if it's not keto per se, and still make amazing gains? Or are you potentially leaving a bunch of gains on the table simply because you don't like consuming carbs? Thankfully, a recent systematic review and meta-analysis by Vargas Molina et al. looked at this very question, specifically focusing on randomized trials on resistance trained participants with a minimum duration of eight weeks. This review essentially found that when it comes to fat-free mass, there were no significant differences between keto and traditional diets and that both approaches resulted in muscle gain. So there you have it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Just kidding. As always, terms and conditions apply. First, only five studies were included in the review and most used DEXA to measure fat-free mass, which isn't necessarily the most accurate method for assessing muscle growth. That said, there was one study that did use ultrasound to directly assess muscle growth and did find that keto resulted in muscle growth after 11 weeks. But there's a catch with the overall results. The participants in these studies didn't gain much weight overall, which makes it tough to expect significant muscle growth. As we covered in our bulking uh, video with Dr. Eric Helms, check it out, it is possible to gain muscle in a calorie deficit or while maintaining your weight, but it's harder, especially in trained individuals. And while recomposition, aka losing fat and gaining muscle at the same time, is possible, we must interpret the results of this meta with some caution. When looking at some of the other literature that exists on the topic, a 2022 systematic review and meta-analysis by Corey Catal found that diets rich in carbohydrates led to greater improvements in performance, strength, and muscle mass compared to keto in athletes and trained adults. Interestingly, keto seemed to be slightly better for fat loss, but when it came to muscle growth, diets that included carbs appear to have the upper hand. So, is keto an amazing option if you're aiming to absolutely maximize muscle growth and strength? As it stands, the evidence points at a soft no. While you can still make gains on keto, obviously, a diet rich in carbohydrates is likely a safer bet if you want to absolutely maximize muscle growth and exercise performance. However, if you love keto, and you don't mind potentially leaving some gains on the table, go ahead and just make sure you're in a slight cal calorie surplus, consume approximately 1.6 grams of protein per kilo of body weight, and consider timing the very few carbs that you consume around your training sessions. Keep in mind, and even if you're an advanced lifter who wants to make amazing gains, yes, keto may be suboptimal, but at the end of the day, you're going to be fine and you're still going to reap the benefits of resistance training. That said, if you're just a low carb uh, diet enjoyer and you're not necessarily a keto fanatic per se, and you still want to consume mostly proteins and fats, you can take a more moderate approach to low carb diets. 
adding an extra 50 to 100 grams of carbs to your diet, so around an extra 200 to 400 calories, uh, especially around your training, could give you the best of both worlds. So you can still be consuming all the foods you love, uh, like great quantities, you can mostly consume fats and protein, but at the same time, you can still reap some of the benefits of ingesting carbs around your training and potentially some of the benefits of carbohydrates post-training for recovery. Additionally, this sort of approach may make it easier for you to adapt to a lower carbohydrate intake, um, especially if you haven't really been dabbling with low carb diets before. So altogether, keto and low carb diets in general are fine. But given that restricting your carbohydrate intake will not really give you much of an edge in fat loss or muscle building, it's difficult to really recommend going low carb as a default option for the majority of people who want to get jacked. And that's the real issue here. It's not that low carb diets or keto diets are promoted as just another option for people that have certain food preferences or find it a bit easier to manage their hunger if they consume more protein and more fats. Many keto proponents will make the case that a ketogenic diet is far more superior for fat loss and sometimes even for muscle gain than a regular diet that contains carbs. These sort of sales pitches come with a bunch of fear mongering around carbs, insulin, words like inflammation, um, just sugar fear mongering, and in general, they make it seem as if consuming carbohydrates is not only not going to do much for your performance in the gym and for potential muscle gains, but it's going to have insanely deleterious effects on your health and in general will just lead to you being a worse version of yourself, which is not true and is not really supported by any scientific evidence. Now, for those of you out there that don't really care about keto or low carb and are you're just looking to maximize muscle and strength gain, carbohydrates are still your friend. As far as how many carbs you should be consuming per day to ensure you're maximizing gains, a systematic review by Hensel and Santal suggested that the commonly recommended range of four to 10 grams per kilogram of body weight might be a bit of an overkill for those focused um, mainly on resistance training. Although more research is needed to determine the optimal carbohydrate intake for maximizing gym performance and muscle gain, studies on bodybuilders um, show that they typically consume around three to seven grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight daily, which doesn't necessarily mean that everyone should follow that exact guideline, but if you're somewhere in that range, you're likely maximizing gains. A super simple approach to organizing your macros without it being some sort of a magical recommendation or anything like that by no means, is to aim for a minimum of 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, as that's been shown to be enough to maximize strength gains, and it's very close to the 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight recommendation for muscle growth. Um, around 0.6 grams of fat per kilogram of body weight, and then allocating the remainder of your calories to carbs by simply dividing whatever calories you have left by the number four. Keep in mind that just because overall keto doesn't seem to be ideal for muscle growth, if you want to give keto a try or low carb diets a try because you want to give them a try for whatever reason, feel free to do so without being in fear that you're leaving massive gains on the table. All I'm saying here is that this shouldn't be your default approach because it's no magic bullet for either muscle, uh, muscle gain or fat loss. If you're looking for a way to better manage your macros, give Macrofactor a go. I've worked with plenty of clients in the past who've used Macrofactor and have been very positive about how it has allowed them to manage their macronutrient intake because it simply did it for them. It will coach you and adjust your macros based on how you're responding, and it can be a great way to potentially give low-carb diets a go. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, and this can be a great investment for some people who want to essentially outsource all the diet management and all the thinking to somebody else, premium online coaching is available by Stronger by Science, the coaching system, over at SPS is genuine. I'm not saying hire a coach for the rest of your life, but a few months working with a coach 
um, and having the manager of nutrition can be quite valuable as far as learning how to manage things long term and obviously seeing some results. That said, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification icon. Uh, additionally, don't forget to head over to strongerbyscience.com for podcast, newsletters and free programs with it, articles, both nutrition, training and a whole bunch of other stuff. Google Macro Factor, because aside from the app, you also have plenty of really high quality nutrition content. And we will see you guys next time. Peace.